Ionic compounds with transition metals. Main group ions. Each main group element has only one possible ionic charge. That charge is related to the number of its valence electrons, since that determines how many electrons must be gained or lost for it to have a full outer shell. The main group elements are in the S block and the P block, and their valence electrons are only their outer electrons in the outer S and P orbitals. Transition element ions. Most transition metals in the D block can have more than one ionic charge. This is due to electrons filling their S and D orbitals in ways that can increase or decrease the number of valence electrons. This can alter the number of electrons which can be lost to achieve a full outer shell and makes the ionic charge of a transition element depend on the anion in the, in the ionic compound. Two types of exceptions. There are two notable exceptions. First, there are two main group elements which behave like transition metals. Tin and lead can form ions with different charges, even though they are in the main group. They are called post-transition metals and are treated in the same way as transition metals. Their ionic charge depends on the anion in the ionic compound. The second exception is that there are transition metals that, like main group elements, can only have one charge, which is given by the last digit of their group number. Silver is in group 11, always has a charge of positive one. Cadmium, which is in group 12, always has a charge of positive two. Zinc, also in group 12, always has a charge of positive two. Silver, zinc, and cadmium ions. To understand why these three transition metals only form ions with one possible charge, let's look at their electron configurations. Take a moment and pause this recording before proceeding to see the next slide. In all three cases, the neutral atom has a full set of d orbitals. That's 10 d orbitals. See here the d10, d10, d10. Since full subshells are stable, only the s orbitals, the 5s1, 4s2, 5s2, provide valence electrons. That gives zinc and cadmium two valence electrons, this 4s2 and 5s2, so gives their cations a charge of plus two. In the case of silver, there is only one electron in the s orbital, since the other was taken to complete the full set of d orbitals. That gives the silver cation a charge of positive one. Are silver, zinc, and cadmium even transition elements? By one well-accepted definition, these three are not even considered transition elements, though they are in the D block. By that definition, transition elements are metals which have partly filled D orbitals in transitioning from the S block to the P block. Since the D orbitals in these three cases are full, they could be defined as post-transition elements like tin or lead. But we'll stick with calling them transition elements since that is also well accepted and is easier to read from the periodic table. The stock naming system for cations. Since transition metal cations can have different charges, we need a way to name them to reflect their charge in a given compound. We'll use the stock naming system, using Roman numerals, to name them and account for their charge. Here are a number of examples. The cation copper with a charge of positive one, we would call copper, and then use the Roman numeral one to indicate its charge. These are, these are cations with a charge of positive two, cobalt, iron, manganese. Notice we name the element, and then Roman numerals, we put the charge. Same thing here with chromium and iron three. Writing formulas from names. Given the name of an ionic compound, we can write its formula. Example one, iron three oxide. First, we write the two ions with their charges noting that the charge of the iron ion is three plus based on the Roman numeral three in the name iron three oxide. We know that oxygen always has a charge of negative two. Now write a formula that will yield a neutral ionic compound. We can use the crossing method where this two superscript becomes the subscript of iron 
and this 3 superscript becomes the subscript of oxygen. Or you could multiply this out algebraically, but the crossing method is very fast and efficient. Now we reduce to lowest terms if needed, but we don't have to do this step because 2 and 3 are already in lowest terms. For a second example, let's look at tin 4 oxide. We'll write the two ions with their charges, noting that the charge of the tin ion is 4 based on the Roman numeral 4 in its name, and oxygen is always going to have a charge of negative 2. Now we can cross, making the 2 of oxygen, the superscript 2 of oxygen, the subscript of tin, and the 4 superscript of tin, the subscript of oxygen. Or you could solve this algebraically, but again, it's very fast to do the crossing method. And having done that, we see that 2 and 4 are not lowest terms. Saying we're going to have two tin atoms for every four oxygen atoms gives us no better information than to say we're going to have one tin atom for every two oxygen atoms. So this is the formula in lowest terms. Naming ionic compounds from formulas. Just as we could determine a formula with the transition metal based on its name, we can also determine its name given a formula. But first we need to determine the cations, the metals, charge. Since all compounds are neutral, the total positive cation charge must equal the total negative anion charge. That's stated algebraically here. Total cation charge plus total anion charge must equal zero. The total cation charge is going to be the charge of one cation, the charge of one metal, times the number of cations in the formula. The total anion charge is going to be the charge of one anion times the number of anions in the formula. And that gives us this formula. The charge of cations times the number of cations plus the charge of anion plus times the number of anions must equal zero. Example one, transition metal formulas. We'll begin with the formula we derived on the previous slide. The charge of cation times the number of cations plus the charge of an anion times the number of anions must equal zero. Let's try this with iron chloride, FeCl3. The charge of the iron ion we don't know because a transition metal can have different charges. We do know the number of iron ions. There's one. Fe has no subscript, and one no subscript implies a subscript of one. Chlorine has a charge of negative one. It always has a charge of negative one. And there are three chlorine ions in the formula based on the three subscript here, three. So this becomes our new formula. The charge of iron times one plus negative one times three equals zero. We can bring the negative 1 times 3 to the other side. It becomes positive 3. So charge of iron times 1 equals positive 3. Divide by 1. Charge of iron must be equal to positive 3. That means the cation is Fe3+, plus, or in stock naming system, iron 3. The compound's name is iron 3 chloride. Example 2, transition metals formulas. Find the charge on the cation and the formula name for CRO. Once you answer the following questions, you can use the formula at the bottom of this page to find the answer. How many oxygen atoms are there in CRO? How many chromium atoms are there in CRO? What is the charge of O, or oxygen, in any chemical formula? Then plug in what you know and solve for the charge of chromium using this formula. The answer is on the next slide. We start with our formula, the, the charge of a cation times the number of cations plus the charge of an anion times the number of anions must equal zero. In the case of CRO, this becomes the charge of chromium times the number of chromium ions plus the charge of oxygen times the number of oxygen ions must equal zero. Well, the charge of chromium we don't know because that can vary since it's a transition metal. But we do know there's one chromium atom. So we put a 1 in here for this part of the formula. The charge of oxygen is always negative 2, so we put that here. And the number of oxygen atoms is 1, 
because there's no subscript to the oxygen atom. It tells us it's 1. So we have the charge of chromium times 1 plus negative 2 equals 0. Well, that means the charge of chromium times 1 equals positive 2, which means the charge of chromium ion in this formula is positive 2. So the cation is Cr2+, plus, and with stock naming system, this becomes chromium-2. The compound's name is chromium-2 oxide. Again, the oxide, the ide at the end of oxygen here is what's added at the end of every anion when putting it into an ionic formula.